What's up, Hyperfast Nation? On this episode of the show, I sat down with an amazing individual. 21 years ago, he went to a Tony Robbins event and then decided to quit his corporate job, got into real estate, started off doing smaller rehabs and flips. Now he's doing big multifamily deals. Welcome to the show, Sunil Chiller. Welcome to the show today, Sunil. How are you doing? I am doing well. How are you today? Great. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, you've got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about for capital raising. Before we dive into that, why don't you tell our listeners and viewers out there a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today? Sure, absolutely. Uh, basically, came from the world of finance. Um, in my 20s, I was a assistant vice president for a major financial brokerage company. Um, I actually met with Tony Robbins uh, during that time where I, two weeks later, I gave my two weeks resignation and walked away, got into the world of real estate, started buying, rehabbing, flipping, and just uh, never got out. Loved it. Just got hooked. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. when was the when was the meeting with Tony Robbins? Twenty one years ago. Wow. Was when I was when I met him. Yep. Um. And and what what specifically do you remember about that meeting? Like, what was the setting, and you know, what did you tell him, and what did you hear that the, that made you change your life trajectory so fast? <laughs> the events that unfolded that very first night were me walking bare feet on fire oh you did the fire walking and, uh, i did the fire walking and that basically did it for me yeah so uh leaving that event uh you know i was always motivated and i know i could always do more and wanted to do more and um making nice six digits income uh but it wasn't good enough so after i did that um Got into real estate and test the call. So what what was the the path yeah. after that meeting? Like what what did what what were your next steps and what what did that lead to over the next year or so? Well, what had happened uh, prior to real estate? Uh, one of the things that I did were while I was studying for my Series Seven license, I also studied for my real estate license. Uh, failed the real estate test. However, passed the Series 7 license, that test, hmm. um, and it haunted me that I actually never, never took it. Even if I were to pass it and just did nothing with it, I'll be fine with it. And um, it haunted me for a while. And, you know, roughly at that time also, that's when uh, Tony Robbins, he went town and I went to that event. And uh, like I said, I gave my resignation right after that and got into real estate. I took the exam, passed it, and... Uh, just you know, started buying, rehabbing, and flipping, which I've done successfully now for 21 years. And now I'm in the multifamily space. So what what was your buy, rehab, and flip formula? Like what were the what were the kind of deals you were you were doing back then, if you recall? Uh, again, everything's number driven, right? You look at your profits and you work backwards. Um, the group. You know, getting into real estate, the company that I got involved with, that particular group, basically did a lot of foreclosures, bankruptcies, and they were more so investors versus realtor, realtors. So they actually taught me the business, and uh, you know, just it's, it's just crazy. Whereby every week, every other week, I'm in front of a couple of different judges and different courts in different counties, uh, working with my sellers who were losing their houses so i'm representing my clients and uh it was just a great learning experience on that part of it as well and at the same time i had the ability with the knowledge of these individuals and the work ethic to just get out there and make it happen and i took advantage of it how did you make the jump from rehabs and flipping into multifamily when did when did that take place uh, I the multifamily is about two years now, so that's pretty young. Um, you know, one of the things that I've, that I've done is I've bought 
a numerous amount of properties that I've already, you know, rehabbed and flipped. And I own a lot of properties as well. Um, two years ago, I got into the multifamily space and it's just been life changing, even more so. Uh, challenging, obviously, at times. Uh, raising funds, dealing with investors and all of that good stuff. Um, but, you know, the way, the way you look at it is it's flipping on steroids. Because if I were to buy one, two houses a month, you're looking at 12, 24 houses a year. Rather than one transaction where you could potentially buy 100, 200 houses in one shot. Uh, mm-hmm. On average, we hold these properties for about five years and then flip them. We sell them off. So our investors obviously uh, make money. And one of the benefits too is with our tenants, they see someone coming in there, you know, rehabbing the property, making their lives uh, and their homes a much better, safer place to live in. And it's just a win-win for all parties. How how difficult was that transition? You know, you're talking like going from a couple hundred thousand or maybe a million to tens of millions on a project, a lot perhaps. Of, like, <laughs> um, it's, it's funny because a lot of the investors with me today, they're so used to the small, smaller stuff, you know, the small residential flips. So when I spoke to them about the multifamily space and what the potential of money could be, there was such an apprehension whereby not not being small minded, but not themselves having the knowledge of what this looks like in a different state. Uh, it was no. So basically, I needed to shift and change my audience. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was a big pivot uh, to do that and uh, you know the the goal is obviously raising money that's that's part of it so it's just a constant race also to do that but the key to any transaction obviously is money on the smaller stuff I always had the money available and then you go out there and you buy on the big stuff you, you basically get on the contract and then you go raise money right which is not what I'm used to uh, so what I've done right now, on my very first deal, uh, along with a couple of problems from the seller's side, that first deal bombed. So it was disastrous. So being successful in 21 years, doing it my way, I've decided with the multifamilies as well to do it differently. Make sure that we have a certain amount of money, if not all, to buy multiple properties, have that in place up front and uh, go out there and buy. Hmm. What, um, what, what kind of audience do you have to get in front of now compared to when you were just doing the, the rehab and flips? The rehab and flips were, uh, it's, it's funny, but I had a, I have a few attorneys, uh, who would invest with me on the smaller side and um, they're just comfortable being in the space of New Jersey they're comfortably being in their local backyard uh, so my audience are basically you know I do have doctors attorneys um, dentists so more white collar individuals um, who would look to invest people who have money but they themselves are busy where they can't afford to take the time to go do something so that that's working hey hold that thought do you want to get a hundred tips for free from my best selling real estate book the hyper local hyper fast real estate agent if you do go to hyperfasttips.com and you can download a hundred of my best tips today again that's hyperfasttips.com. You can download a hundred tips on how to grow your business, get more clients, deliver more value to more people. Go to hyperfasttips.com. What, um, your, your typical multifamily deal now, what, what does it look like? You know, what are you buying it for? How much are you spending, if any, on the rehab? You know, what, what kind of money, what kind of capital do you have to raise to get it done? Can you kind of dive into some of those details for us? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we like to be somewhere between 20 to $25 million. Um, 
we actually, <laughs> uh, funny little story, we just got into something, uh, 80, 80 million dollars, uh, and we were outbidded. So we actually hmm. were raising money, which, you know, we were okay with. Uh, so we pushing the envelope. One thing about me is, you know, I always like to live outside of my comfort zone. So I like pushing myself, number one, being uncomfortable and pushing others who are also around me to be uncomfortable, to spread their wings themselves, uh, <clears throat> just for each one of us to grow and grow as a team. So on the rehab side, just to answer the question, obviously that number varies property to property. Uh, we tend to buy class B. Uh, sometimes if you could get a class C property in a B area, uh, we'll do that. But typically class B properties to rehab. But you know, like I said, the price point on our rehabs are gonna be different from each one. What what markets are you are you buying in now and, and you know, has that changed since you started? Uh, right now, the I guess everyone, including us, are looking in, in the Texas market. That just seems to be such a hot market. Uh, the Tennessee market is also pretty hot. Um, you know, if we come across something in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it and, and jump on it. Uh, it needs to make sense, number one. Uh, with interest rates on the rise currently, it's a lot harder where your LTVs are a lot lower. So that just changes the dynamics on what we did purchase in the past. Something that we are looking at right now is um, for other investors who have purchased and their rates were not locked in, uh, we are looking to see who potentially may look to sell. So that's a key avenue right now. Are, are you still seeing cap rates go lower and lower or has the you know increase in interest rates the I guess fears of a recession has that has that caused the cap rates to, to come back up at all we haven't seen it yet the cap yeah. rates come up um, haven't seen it yet there's there's a lot of money right now in the market there are a lot of foreign investors who really don't care about cap rate they basically just need to deploy money in the U.S. market, and um, you know that's our competition as well. So what do you do to so with an individual who don't care if he's getting a one-two cap rate, when obviously we will not purchase those cap rates with those cap rates. Well, what, yeah. What what do you do to create value for your investors? Because I know you're raising capital, you know, rather than just pay the. the lower and lower cap rates, like how do you go out and find better deals for them? Well, one of the things that thankfully I'm blessed where I have brokers throughout the country calling me right now because I've built relationships with them. My partners have also built relationship with brokers. Uh, so we do get the phone calls, number one. Uh, number two, we, you know, we, we hunting for properties like everybody else. Um, one of the persons that we have on our team as well is a demographer. So depending, you know, where the part of progress is, obviously that's where we want to be and we will focus on and uh, speak to the brokers in those areas as well. So we try to be there before others. And what, um, how do, how do you raise capital? I know you, you said there's, you know, that, that's a big part of what you do now. Um, how, how are you going out and, and, and finding investors and, and, you know, getting more equity to deploy? Just networking, networking events. Um, in November of this year, I'm actually going to Dubai to meet with investors as well. Um, just being out there. Is it hard? Absolutely, <laughs> but what what isn't? What um, what I'm, what 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 type of uh, like investment size do you do you normally get on your typical deal? Like you know how are these people writing hundred thousand dollar checks, million dollar checks? Uh, you know it, it varies. A couple, few of them hundred thousand dollars one uh, checks. Uh, we do get million dollar checks. Um, I need to grow that number because we do have a pipeline of deals where 
money is just crucial right now to jump on as much as possible. Um, just building the pipeline of investors. My partners are the ones who right now is are focusing on the deal and I'm focusing on the money part of it. And how, how big is your, your overall team? And you mentioned your partners finding the deal, you get in the investor money. Uh, how, you know, what, what does your overall team look like to, to run the operation that you do? We have about six individuals on the team. Um, and everyone obviously have their own unique niche. Um, you know, like I said, the focus right now is myself, all of us are pitching in, but myself really, I'm the one who are, who are more so focusing with one other individual on raising the funds and everyone else is focusing on the deal. Once the deal comes together, then obviously we'll drill down more where everyone would have more of a specific um, job description, if you will, um, to make this happen. Hey, hold that thought for a minute. Do you wanna take your real estate business to the next level? If you do, there's no reason to go it alone. Learn from people who've been where you want to go. Carrie and I have sold billions of dollars in real estate. We've netted over seven figures for seven years in a row now. And we wanna see if you would be a good fit to work for us. We don't work with a lot of people, but we wanna give you a chance to get on a free strategy call to see if we can help you get your business to the next level. Go to hyperfastcoach.com and apply for your discovery session today. Again, that's hyperfastcoach.com. Uh, where, where do you see the market going from here? Do you think uh, cap rates are going to go down more? Are they going to pause, come back up? Um, you know, it looks like rents are continuing to increase, uh, especially in the areas of the markets you said you're in. Um, but overall, you know, with interest rates rising, recession on the horizon, where do you see the multifamily market going? I think cap rates are going to come up. Mm -hmm. um, you do have you do have those sellers right now who just don't understand just yet that the market dynamics are changing. So you give you got to give them a little bit of time. But I think in the very near future, that's going to change. They want to get out. So if, we, if someone listening to this show was thinking about getting in the multifamily, would you tell them to jump in now or would you tell them maybe to wait six months? Um, what would your advice be? Listen, there's always a deal out there, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone always will have their own unique situation. Uh, get in. <laughs> it's never too late to get in. Obviously, you want to buy right. That's the key. To any investment uh, that's where the money is made in the purchase not a sale um, so you want to buy right and you want to make sure you have a team you want to make sure you deal with people who have done it before who have been burnt before who have knowledge of the business so you have guidance uh, that's really what you want you need to have the mindset that you could do it when you know when things get tough you're not gonna cut and run um, so it's, it's a mindset game at the end of the day. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sunil. Before we wrap up, I always like to do a hyper fast round if you're ready for some rapid fire Q&A. Sure. All Go right. Ahead. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new investor? Um, like I just said, have a mentor, have someone who could guide you. That is so important in this game. There are so many financial landmines that you could step in. You want to avoid them. One or two body shots will hmm. take you out. What's so a have guidance? What's a mistake that experienced investors make often? A uh, mistake that experienced um, budgeting, budgeting for hmm. the unknown or uh, capex budgets. You want to be very cautious of that. I knew some. I know someone who just had bought something, and um, the contractors in their due diligence did, missed the uh, asbestos problems, and that's coming back to bite. So that's case in point right now. What um, What is something that you know now that you wish you knew when you first started out? 
Well, I wish I knew about a multifamily space mm. 21 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I started buying small. <laughs> so I wish it was different back then. All right, when you're not working on your next real estate deal, what are you most likely doing? Uh, this year, I'm turning 50 and I'm taking flying lessons. So I told my wife, uh, this year when I do turn 50 is my midlife crisis because I'm getting my, obviously my pilot's license and I want to buy, buy a plane. I want to fly. All right. So that's what I'm doing. Last question. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Um, 10 years from now, that's a great question. I see myself in the next three, four years retired and, um, enjoying life yeah, for the last 21 years. I've been successful doing what I'm doing and I've been enjoying life tremendously and I work hard as well. And so we do have that balance and, uh, yeah, next 10 years, I am totally flying, enjoying life with everyone. All right. Last question. Um, or no, that was the last question. Uh, but before we sign off, um, can you tell the listeners and viewers out there how to connect with you or if they're interested in learning more about your investments, uh, how they can learn more? Absolutely. I love giving everyone my cell number. It's the <laughs> easiest way to get hold of me. Uh, old school. I know a lot of people don't like that. Yep, old school. Uh, 201-954-0292. Best way to connect with me. Reach All right, out. well, hit up Sun uh, Sunil on his cell phone. And Sunil, thank you so much for being on the show and telling your story and you know how you made the transition from rehabs to big multifamily deals to all of our listeners and viewers out there thank you for tuning in we'll see you next time if you enjoyed this episode be sure and go to hyperfastagent.com to learn about upcoming in-person and online events and don't forget to share this show with someone that you think could benefit from hearing it and make sure you subscribe on youtube or anywhere that you can find podcasts Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe.